What is good YouTube? My name is Ash Porter and welcome to my channel today and to this week's, today's, whatever time frame it is, book vlog is this, leading out of who you are, discovering the secret of undefended leadership by Simon P. Walker. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I had never heard of this book before. I do not know who Simon P. Walker is, apparently he's a a clergyman, basically works for the Church of England, um, an expert in leadership and lecturer. And he's written this book about undefended leadership. And I'm interested in it, but I heard of this book firstly through my friends who I've mentioned before, One Life Leadership. So again, I'm gonna put their channel, their website in the bio, in the link in the bio, in the description, this is an Instagram. And so check them out if you want, but they have been reading this as part of their book club. And so although I think I'm a little late to the scene, to the party, I'm gonna join in. Hopefully there's a lot to learn. It's not a particularly long book, so I should smash this out in just a few days, but I'm excited to learn what it is to lead out of who you are. This was some good reading this morning, you know, Going into this book, as usual with a lot of the books recently, I haven't really known what to expect. I haven't, yeah, I haven't had high expectations to be honest, but this one so far has been, it's actually been really good and there's so much I could talk about from today's reading. So I just wanna draw out a few key points if that is okay. So point number one, leaders act as a guide between the known and the unknown you know followers people following you and whatever it is whether it's your family work you know leadership I, he actually gives a really good definition but i haven't got it right in front of me um but it's all about you know do people look up to you basically are people inspired by you are you leading people in some small or big way and leaders take people from the known to the unknown they act as guides and that can only happen with trust you know if you have some followers and you lose trust they're not going to follow you they're not going to go into the unknown with you so trust is vital to the act of leading people from the known to the unknown second leadership should be like an expression of who we are so i think part of this undefendedness that he's talking about is it can be so easy to hide our real selves and that actually true great leadership comes from an authenticness in who we are being uh, expressed in what we do. Thirdly, something that was also very cool, which he's talking a bit more bigger scale because this is more governmental, political, but he talks about, and it's a really interesting point, how change for good often doesn't happen because it more often than not has short-term costs so for example, climate change. The world is a mess. It's going to absolute pot and we need to do something about it. But so many people aren't willing to buy into stopping climate change because the short term costs are great and they can't comprehend the long term gains of it. But he also equates it into politics and it says, you know, for politicians, people in positions of leadership or power, whatever it is, often they can start the process of good stuff, but they won't be able to finish it because people get sick of the short term costs and don't have the vision or they don't yeah, have the long sightedness to see what the long term gain of it is. And I thought that's such an interesting point. It's so true that politics is about right now. What can you do right now? Instant impact. And you know, we're useless at waiting for long term gains and willing to sacrifice a bit in the short term, which is sad because does that mean good stuff just doesn't, isn't gonna happen? They were always gonna have bad leadership and bad leaders who just mess things up. It's a bit of a grim thought. And then the final bit of today was he did this whole thing, which I'm not gonna explain to a deep level. You should read the book to, to, to understand it better about the front and backstage of our leadership and how you know the front is the bit that everyone else sees and the backstage is what we see, what can be hidden and how there needs to be a balancing act because actually so often the unhealthy thing is to have this incredible front of stage, this almost act we put on as if we were a performer of some kind but then the backstage is an absolute mess. We're full of anxiety. We've got secrets and shames that we're hiding away from the world. And it's just a tip and it's wrecking us. 
Um, and he says, you know, the reality is that backstage is at some point it's going to leak to the front stage, that they're connected, that they have uh, an impact on each other. And actually it's finding a balance between a healthy front and backstage and how actually one of the biggest things we can do in leadership is be a little bit vulnerable. You know, you don't have to show the whole world everything going on in your life, but there's a bit of vulnerability showing a bit of the backstage. Hey, this is what I'm going through. This is some of my struggles right now. And it's taking that into the front stage to be authentic. Good morning. So another good morning of reading, you know. And I think what I want to say before I dig into what I learned today, what I really like about this book, that is that although it's he's a Christian author, he's ordained, it's like a book, almost a Christian book on leadership. It's also way more general. It's not just about Christian leadership. It's about leadership and he's got so many case studies and examples and research that aren't just church related stuff and I'm really really enjoying that because it can be so easy for Christians just to talk about the church 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 and actually Christians are in all areas of work and we do all different kinds of stuff and so I'm really enjoying this and I really really appreciate that from this guy and so some of the things I really want to talk about are first of all he has this really little bit of advice about, you know, when you're a leader, when people look up to you, your opinions have power to them. And so we need to be, as leaders, you know, if you're in a group of people who look up to you where you are leading, you need to make sure you just don't throw your opinion out there carelessly. I know I can be prone to do that a little bit, and this is probably something I need to work on, because actually what you have, what you say has weight to it. And so... You need to be careful with your opinions because yes, you're entitled to your opinion, but you're not entitled to like uh, throw it around so it could hurt, manipulate, use others, if that makes sense. Um, the second thing is control. So he has this big section on control, but the highlight is undefended leaders that, you know, what he's talking about. Um, they are people who are okay with giving up control. Not all of it, you don't have to give up everything, but in the right circumstances, they're okay with not micromanaging everything, with giving people authority and power and decision-making ability and giving up that little bit of control. And then finally, um, this is the bit that really stood out to me and I was saying that isn't just Christian. He goes into this whole incredible section about ego and about how as young children and teenagers that's where our ego is formed in good ways or bad ways and the experiences we have um as a small child and teenager form how we trust and how our ego forms into our adult life and that's gonna have knock-on effects for our leadership and you know so for example this is just a really easy example so let's say you're the youngest child of a few siblings and every growing up every time you say something every time you raise an idea you're laughed at you're put down um just because you know that's what teenagers do that's what siblings can do sometimes then you get into adult life and that child that person is going to take into adult life this lack of trust in those situations to share so if he's in the team if he's leading a team he's not he or she isn't going to want to contribute their ideas out of fear for being put down and so we all bring into our leadership baggage where, you know, some good stuff, but a lot of probably baggage and bad stuff. And actually it's about working out, okay, what, what are the roots of these things and how do we overcome them? If you're terrified of sharing because of some root somewhere, you've got to try and get help to learn to overcome that and enhance your leadership. Oh, this is good, you know, this is so much better than I thought it was going to be. Good morning on a beautiful Sunday morning it is beautiful. It's gorgeous outside. And this morning's reading was really good, but it was basically focusing. He was outlining um, th- four different types of ego. So, you know, we all have ego. We all have our personalities and specifically within leadership. We all have some kind of ego, whether we like it or not. And, you know, egos are, can be conned as this battle. Oh, he's got a huge ego. And I think it's misunderstood because it's, you know, it's a bit about 
who you've been shaped into and the way you react to situations and your your personality. But anyway, and so here's four types. There is there is so much in what I read this morning and I do not have time to go through all. So you're gonna have to read the book yourself to fully get to grips with this. But the four types, just to summarize, you've got the shaping ego, the defining ego, the adapting ego, and the defending ego. And now these are egos, which are all based on what he's covered and he explains it really well on what happens to us as a child, our development, the situation we're in, what our family life's like, how, and basically how we learn to trust people because the fundamental thing to these egos is trust. Like have we learned to tr learn to trust ourselves or have we learned to trust, have we learned to trust other people or have we learned not to trust either of those two people as well. And it's really interesting, so just some highlights, you know, the shaping ego, often full of optimism, paternalism, and they kind of define their own reality. Um, they need less affirmation, but obviously that whole defining their own reality thing can be a bit dodged. They can, they can be very firm on what they believe, but they can shape a reality which almost doesn't exist, if that makes sense. Um, and then the defending ego, so they're more like, judge more judgmental more critical the world's not really a self place they trust themselves a lot but they don't really trust other people and um yeah and they are can often be caught up in success and like what is what's my next success you know yeah i may have just done this really well but that doesn't matter anymore because i'm defined by my success and then the adapting egos so these guys have little trust in their selves but high trust in others, they're the type of people that often um, just try to meet other people's needs. They are so caught up in pleasing other people, they forget about themselves a lot. They can be incredibly high working, um, hard working, have incredibly low self-esteem, all that kind of stuff. And then finally, the defending ego that has little of both trust and um, basically life's about stopping people from hurting them. <laughs> And so that's a real quick summary. There is so much more to it, but it's really interesting. I think what he does really well is he explains how each of those egos are formed. Like the fact that, um, yeah, it's based on our development as a child and then how that re relates into leadership. But they also, the final thing he points out is that they're all interlinked. So he says that the defining and adapting are kind of paired up. One of them's gonna be your sort of backstage ego where behind the scenes what you like and one of them's going to be your front stage ego what you kind of liked to the public eye and then shaping and defending exactly the same one that's going to be one one's going to be the other and what reading this chat this section could be quite like oh gosh I suck or you read these like gosh leadership's hard how are people so broken but actually what he does conclude that this, this section saying is that you know the reality is yes we all probably fall into one of these categories naturally. However, we can change. Change is always possible. And that's hopeful and hopeful for our leadership as well. This morning is one of those mornings where to be honest, my brain feels a bit frazzled. I'm not fully with it, but I was trying to get my readings, trying to get as much in as I wanted to. But um, I just want to read you two quotes today. I know that's like a cop out, but they just really spoke to me and so this first one freedom to lead depends on us finding a source of unconditional approval that is not jeopardized by our performance so there's this whole section about approval and i mean he doesn't explicitly say it but i think he's really pointing towards you know since he's a christian actually we can try and look for approval everywhere right and the reality is human relationships are flawed but there's a God, the creator of the universe, who chose to have a relationship with us and can give us that unconditional approval which isn't based on performance but is based on his grace and his love and his mercy. And so that's like the first one which really hit me. Okay, here you go. Are you ready? The second quote. Leadership has little to do with making lots of decisions, with getting a great deal done. It's about getting the right things done. As leaders, the crucial quality we need is to, the courage to stop, the courage to wait and be still while everyone around us is clamoring for a decision. The leader waits until she is confident and clear. I love that. It's not about getting a lot done. It's about getting the right things done. I think that's just 
a quality leadership lesson to take away any time, any place. It's about getting the right things done. Day five and the final day of Leading Out of Who You Are by Simon Walker. And first learning point from today, which I just want to read from my notes all just quickly, is we should have, or he thinks we should have a childlike approach to leadership. So this childlike idea is often talked about in the Christian faith as well because um, the Gospels are full of examples of children coming to Jesus in such an uh, easy way and that childlike acceptance and anticipation of something. And I think he's applying that to leadership saying, you know, children don't think of themselves as leaders and they live like a really playful life and so live a playful, fun life of leadership. Um, they Children retain a sense of wonder in the world and as leaders, uh, Walker encouraged us to do the same, never lose that sense of wonder for the world we live in and all we do. Third, um, children trust, it's just built into them, yes after time they may learn not to trust and as adults we learn not to trust but he's saying you can't ever stop learning to trust because trust is the foundation of all human relationships and so it's so important to that, have a childlike trust, don't get exploited, you know, whatever, but let yourself trust people. And then fourth and finally, um, we teach children to take responsibility. You know, if a children is playing with toys, we teach them, you clean up after yourself. And as adults, for some reason, we forget that a little bit. And he's saying, leaders take responsibility. Leaders take responsibility, leaders clean up their messes. And the, what that happens is that creates a culture that not only we do it, but that spreads to those around us until we have a team, a group of people, a community of people who take responsibility, who clean up their mess. And that's so important in leadership and it's so important in our world. Now think of all the leaders, the bit CEOs of businesses who do not take responsibility for the messes they are causing. And it's so damaging. And then um, there's a few other bits, but the final bit I want to highlight, which I just loved, was there was he bet there was this ginormous paragraph and quote, which I'm not going to read out to you because it was very long, but it summarised what leadership is or what I think been thinking leadership is for so long, but couldn't quite put it into words. But he does it perfectly. Um, and, but a quick summary would be uh, the proper goal of leadership or the proper leadership is to help people to take responsibility, to help and guide people into their full potential of themselves and their humanness. You know, leadership isn't just making decisions, it isn't just inspiring people, it's helping to bring the best out of people in all areas of life to be their best selves and their best humanness, human possible. I absolutely love that. I think that's just such a quality way to end this book on um, it's like un leading out of who you are, leading out of an undefended place. You know, as usual, I just didn't know what to expect of this book. One Life, you know, obviously recommended it and I knew oh, I must be decent if One Life recommended it. And it has really blown me away. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't think the last five days I've probably given it enough like brain space. I feel like this is one of those books that I, ha I haven't done it justice. And I think I'm gonna come back to, there's particularly a chapter I really wanna read again and make some more detailed notes on. Um, but it really is a great book on leadership. Like I don't, I haven't read much that is like this, that really delves into it, that has great backing case studies, um, research into roots of our leadership problems and successes and I just really 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 enjoyed this book I think there's so much Simon Walker has you know all the faith stuff aside he has a great understanding of humans and human nature and humanness and I think that's so important to leadership and then obviously having a bit of the faith stuff for me is important as well and yeah I really really recommend this book so if you haven't read it, if you want to dive deeper into everything I've been talking about, go grab this, Leading Out of Who You Are, Discovering the Secret of Undefended Leadership by Simon P. Walker. I have been Ash Porter. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time.